Hi, uh, this is John Stacy, and today we're going to be talking about an installation of a, what would you call this, Joyce? I would call it a bookcase wall or a uh, fake wall. Okay, uh, tell me about this. Well, in our particular situation, we set this up because we have a very long narrow room that uh, wasn't that useful in that because it was so long. So what we've done is give ourselves a lot of storage on the other side of the apparent wall and it puts us closer to the television so we can actually see it and then it gives us a little bit of uh, extra room behind the wall for you know someone could use it for like sewing or scrapbooking or an office. And also we have so many um, old paintings and art objects and things we didn't have a place for everything. So it gave us a surface to uh, put that kind of stuff up. Uh, this would however be really uh, useful for someone with a loft or uh, you know some place that doesn't have walls already. Or you could do the same thing with uh, large wardrobe units and have like a, a sleeping room or guest room on the other side of the fake wall. Would you like to tell us a little bit about what this wall is made of and how it was constructed? Well, in this situation we used uh, three bookcases from Ikea and carriage bolted them together. But, as I said, you could use wardrobe units or uh, build a structure yourself. Uh, what we did was put a molding, uh, like a rounded uh, molding, all around the three, the two sides, the top, and left the bottom open. And then we got half-inch plywood cut so that it would fit in two pieces across the entire area. Very nice. And screwed that in and nailed it in. And then down the center where the two large plywoods joined, we used uh, sticky mesh joint tape and then covered all that with joint compound. Then sanded it all down with a wet sponge so that it ended up pretty smooth. You really, it was pretty smooth. Um, what you're seeing here is the raw wall. The plywood and all the uh, joint compound that holds the major seam together and fills all the little uh, uh, screw holes and nail holes. What I would advise people to do if they want to put up a lot of pictures and things like we do is to put those up first. Do your uh, gross calculations and everything on just the plywood because once you get that nice decorative surface up and painted you're not going to want to be dragging things across it and experimenting any further with you know wouldn't this look nice here you want to know it's going to look great so do it first. When you put the wallpaper up or the textured paper up, you can just take a like a single-edged blade or an X-Acto knife and just kind of like pop the paper over the screws and nail heads and things and uh, you know flatten out the the paper then against the uh, wood and you get a real smooth surface and you know where all your nails and screws are. Let's just put the molding around first then got the plywood cut to fit within that. They're, they're flush all around and it gives it a nice finished edge rather than just that raw plywood edge. We did that on both sides and the top but left the bottom free. Which we don't need to show. Yeah, it would probably never really show. Okay, very good. Also, down the center here where the two plywoods were joined, we used um, all that joining tape. It's like a sticky mesh uh -huh. that you 
put a joint compound over. Oh, yeah. Uh, and now it, you couldn't tell where that seam is. That really turned out great. It's amazingly smooth. Yeah. You did a fine job of sanding it all by yourself. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> with a little help from the cameraman, yeah. Yes. Yeah. With um, those wet sponge things with the, I don't know what you call it, grit. They look like they look sanding. like kitchen sponges, but they're really uh, but they're really meant for wet sanding. Yeah, that made an amazing difference using that instead of just a uh, a rough edge sponge so or sandpaper for that. And you hardly get any dust. So the joint compound, after it's wet sponge sanded, is pretty smooth. Then once that's dry, we uh, used a uh, use kills as a primer mm -hmm. so that the entire surface as well as the end the visible end of, of this whole arrangement they were all uh, primered in just just white kills so that the surface was then good to put this textured wallpaper on so the wallpaper is uh, I think that type of thing is mostly made in Canada and it's a paper backing with the different designs done in kind of a maybe a, almost a styrofoam and they come in just incredible varieties of, of design. We just uh, like this one because it, it's so versatile. It does, uh, you, when you put it on, you have to get it very wet and let it sit, let follow the instructions in, in the roller, you know, roll package. And uh, it is a little delicate when it's wet. Sometimes the little foam surfaces try to get off or something, but you have to gently tuck them back in place. Oh, to make it easier to remember where these different things went, we made a, um, a print of the whole thing as they hung on the plywood backing so that, because I, I know I wouldn't remember which went where and it was so much easier to just, it was like a map, just look at the map and see where to go. So I, I, that's a, a really useful hint to me. It does actually take two coats at least in this uh, Rust-Oleum uh, metallic, they say on the can to use two coats, and it really does take it. I, I don't know why the first coat looked terribly dull, and as if the surface had just sucked it up. I wouldn't have expected that with oil-based paint, but it did. And then the second coat just finished. Uh, it's just unbelievably uh, perfect. I wanted to show you the end of the bookcase where there is no um, textured paper. This is how the hammered copper uh, comes out on just a, a smooth prime surface. It shows, it's really quite nice. The, and you see that same hammered look on the molding. How do you view the project now that you've completed it? Well, I'm, I think, overly proud of it. I really like how it turned out. It was a lot of work, but it accomplished what we were trying for. And it could help anybody else who's attempting it to gain a new room or a division in a huge space that is just gaping there with no privacy at all. You could put shelves on this side of it. Um, closet on the other side, make a bedroom over there, a sewing room, a crafts room, kids room, office, and just, I mean, relatively low cost and low effort for what you get out of it. I'd say go for it. <laughs>